speaking, in conversation, you need both thoughts and emotions. Why do you need thoughts and emotions? Why not just thoughts? Why do you need the emotions to go along with those thoughts? Well, thoughts and emotions or feelings act like form and the effects of that form or the uh, a function and the effects of that function. So take, for example, gravity. Gravity is this invisible thing which affects our lives. We need the words, we need the symbols to designate gravity, to identify gravity, to talk about the function of gravity. But we need the emotions to identify the effects of gravity. If you remove emotions from your conversation, you won't know what effect you are producing. You won't be able to describe the effect. You won't be able to make people understand the effect. Just like gravity is invisible, if there are no effects of gravity, if people don't fall over uh, when they disobey the law of gravity, we won't grasp what the effects are of this invisible thing. Similarly, if we remove emotions when we're speaking, we won't understand what the effects of conversation have, our conversation has on another person. We won't uh, understand and appreciate what our words signify and how they function to create a relationship with that person. If you, we remove the emotion from our words, our symbols become meaningless. Our conversation becomes meaningless. It's just like you're reading a book. When you're reading a book, you have to bring all the emotion. You have to bring all the effects yourself to the book you're reading. The words are static. You have to imagine the scenarios. If there's a love story, you have to imagine the intensity of the love. If there's an action story, you have to imagine all the tension and anxiety the characters feel. You have to do all the work because there's no emotion in those words. Now, writers have a trick to kind of substitute for emotion, which is punctuation um, and syntax and how they arrange their sentences. They add exclamation marks. They put words in italics. Um, they use short sentences to uh, introduce more impact to kind of force the emotions out of you, to, to, find, to try to get you to become emotional when you're reading the dead, empty words, the symbols for um, the effects. But without the emotion itself there, it's a crapshoot. You have to decide what the story means. So this is what it's like when you're talking to somebody who speaks in a monotone like this and removes all the emotion from their voice. I can write equations in words, and the program translates them into symbols and prints them out on paper in the appropriate type. You no longer know what their symbols mean, their words mean. You no longer can appreciate the content of their speaking. If somebody tells you like this, I love you, it's no different than reading I love you on a page from a uh, greeting card, a Hallmark greeting card. When you see a card that says I love you, um, what does that mean? What is the effect of those words, of those symbols? What are you trying to identify? When you remove emotion from those words, when you remove feelings from thoughts, you cause people to get lost. You confuse people. You confound people because now your symbols, you put the burden on the other person to do mind reading, to identify what your symbols actually mean, to identify what the effects of your symbols should produce, what the effects of your words should produce. They have no idea. They have no clue. Because when you remove the emotion, there's no roadmap for what effect they should be feeling. When you say, I love you like this, it's just like reading it on a page. But when you say, I love you, or, oh, I really love you, you give the other person a roadmap for what they should think about the symbol, for what they should think about the concept you're giving them. This is why it's so crucial to include, or I should say, to reveal your feeling when you're speaking. All thoughts have a feeling tied to them. All thoughts have feelings that are naturally included with them. Just like gravity, the concept of gravity already exists. And with that existence, with that thing we call gravity, with that force we identify as gravity, it is always producing effects on our lives, on the world, on the universe. So just like our words are, are just symbols of concepts that we're trying to convey, the emotion that we uh, that we include with those words, or I should say the emotion we have with our thoughts that's naturally included in our thoughts, they're intimately tied together and they give our thoughts impact. They move people. They cause people to do things or not do things. This is what the effect of emotion does when it's revealed. 
Now take that mask off! When your thought is revealed, there, your emotion is there buried in that thought. And when people can see that emotion, they are moved to do something or they are prevented from doing something. This is the effect of your emotion and revealing your emotion, revealing your feeling. And this is why it's so crucial to reveal your feeling when you're speaking. Now, the reason why people remove their feelings from their speaking or their thoughts, they remove the feeling from the thought. They don't want to tell you what they're really feeling. They just want to give you the thought. The reason why they do this is because they don't want to be held responsible for moving you or preventing you from doing something. So for example, if they're telling you there's a fire and it could be dangerous, they will remove the emotion from their voice because they don't want to get you into a situation where they'll feel responsible for your life, for your fate, for what happens to you. They don't want to scream fire because if you scream fire with such intense emotion, that means beware, watch out, get out of there. But they don't want to be held accountable for that emotion because that is going to move people to action or that's going to prevent them from doing something. It'll cause them to run away and it'll cause them to not go towards a building where you're saying fire is, the fire exists over here. There's, there's fire. There's a problem. Move away from there. But you don't want to be held accountable that, to that because what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? Well, then people might think of you as a fool. Oh, you're yelling fire and there's no fire. You're an idiot. People would rather protect their self-esteem than be held accountable to their feelings. This is why they artificially remove the feeling from their thoughts. They hide and suppress their feelings. So all you hear are the monotone thoughts from their mouth. It's so crucial when you're speaking, when you're learning to form a relationship, to reveal the feeling that is already there, that's already contained in every single thought you have. <laughs>